EPF is looking to add natural resources investments into its portfolio, especially the palm oil segment. Its chief Sharil Rizal Rizwan says the fund is looking into having more direct exposure in some of the natural resources sector, not just through the listed space, but maybe directly owning some of these planted assets. He says that EPF is already one of the larger investors in palm oil production, with a significant amount of shares in some well-run palm oil firms. He points out that other countries' pension funds have been investing in sustainable forestry and farmlands, which is why EPF is now exploring these potential areas to see if it would suit the fund. It's a done deal. Felda has reportedly completed its expensive acquisition of a 37% stake in PT Eagle High Plantation from Peter Sondak's Rajawali Group. This was done via its special purpose vehicle Felda Investment Corporation and follows the signing of a purchase agreement on December 23rd last year. The acquisition was contentious from the start, thanks to its hefty 505.4 million US dollar price tag. Critics include CMB Group Chairman Nazir Raza, who questioned the 173% premium to Eagle High's average share price in November. Others have claimed that the close relationship between PM Najib Raza and Sonda might have helped to seal the deal. Fella has denied this. Eagle High is one of the largest oil palm plantations in Indonesia. However, it hasn't been doing well at all. In FY16, its net loss widened 116% to 391 billion rupiah or 129 million ringgit, while revenue shrank by 5%. Public Bank saw a 1.6% increase in net profit for its first quarter of FY2017 due to a mixture of higher net interest and Islamic banking income. Net profit came in at 1.25 billion, slightly higher compared to the 1.23 billion reported last year. Revenue similarly came in just 0.4% higher at 5.03 billion compared to 5.01 billion the year before. Public Bank founder and chairman Tae Hong Piao said these numbers indicate a positive start to the bank's 2017 and that in the face of persistent headwinds, still managed to achieve stable profitability driven by its core retail banking business. Proven by its net return on equity at 14.9%, its gross impaired loans ratio of 0.5% and cost income ratio of 34.3%. For the year ahead, they say that the challenges facing the economy will continue to place downside pressure to banks' operation and says that while the bank is confident of its strong market position and brand, it will remain agile and responsive to various challenges and opportunities. Iskandar Waterfront City plans to raise as much as 5 billion ringgit via convertible bonds to develop the real estate that it is acquiring, according to a Bloomberg report. Executive Vice Chairman Lee Kang Hu say that it is also seeking a secondary listing in Hong Kong or China to attract a wider pool of investors. This is after its shares spiked more than 270% this year on a plan to create an entity with land assets worth 47 billion ringgit. The plan is to merge Iskandar Waterfront Holdings and its listed unit Iskandar Waterfront, which will see the enlarged entity owning some 7,400 acres of land in Johor and Kuala Lumpur. Lim says he will leave it to the investors to decide on the value and the potential of the company. Iskandar Waterfront has also roped in partners, including Tamase Holdings and China's Greenland Group, to develop parts of Johor, and is talking to more parties for potential land sales. Sin Counter BAT Malaysia is proposing a lower dividend of 40 cents a share for its financial quarter and the March 31st, 2017, on the heels of a 33.8% drop in net profit. A year ago, it declared a dividend of 55 cents. Lower selling volumes had pressured its first quarter earnings, which fell to 114.2 million ringgit, although it was mitigated by lower operating expenses after its cost efficiency measures last year, including winding down its PJ factory. Revenue skidded too, falling 24.5% to 770.7 million ringgit. As of February, BAT had a market share of 53.5% within the legal industry, a decline of 0.8% quarter on quarter. It says although the group's volumes have remained stable since December 2016, the illegal cigarette incidence has also kept its level at 57%. 
going forward, its outlook for 2017 will still be very much dependent on the recovery of the legal market.